Hello, Algira for the People community. Today's guest is one and only Ravi Sagar, who is a creator of Jira related content. He is also an author of multiple books about Jira and master of Scriptrunner and very interesting person. We covered a lot of topics, including his daily routine, attitude to motivation, to work, to people. It was a very uh, interesting conversation. So welcome to the podcast. Who is Ravi Sagar now? That's what I want to know um, from the beginning. Yeah, uh, yeah, that is uh, definitely uh, a very good, valid question. So just to give you some background. So I run a company called Sparksys and uh, this is of course my company. I founded it. And although this company has been uh, operating for many years, although we started in India back in 2010, but uh, we launched this company in the UK in mm -hmm. uh, 2021. Uh, and I am the founder. I am also the principal consultant. And if I have to talk about myself, I, of course, help my uh, customers, my clients get the most out of uh, Atlassian tools. So I'm a consultant. Uh, basically. And uh, I, yes, I do make videos. I do make uh, these videos uh, on YouTube. And these videos are mainly for myself. I know that, you know, people watch these videos, but uh, when, I, when I started making these videos, my, my idea was to just uh, uh, improve myself because as a consultant, mm -hmm. I have to talk to people. And uh, uh, when I make my videos, I, of course, uh, get this opportunity to learn about something if I don't know it already or, uh, you know, talk about something if I want to, you know, demonstrate or show off my uh, my skills. So, uh, yes, I make videos, but uh, majority of my time, uh, I should say 99% mm -hmm. of my time goes into basically doing my consultation work, basically running my own company. Uh, but I do make regular videos because uh, I like doing it. It is you can say it is my hobby and I like, uh, you know, talking about what I do and, and it mm -hmm. feels good. So at the end of the day, I mean, your, your day might not good, um, might not be good, might not be great, but when I make my videos, it is like, uh, you know, a, a, a very small win. It's like a small boost of motivation for myself that yes, today I've made this video. And sometimes, you know, people do watch these videos and uh, it feels good. And as you mentioned before, uh, when you, when you make something online, like when you create some content online, people, yeah. uh, come to know about you and uh, they send me messages and it feels great. Uh, it feels great and wonderful when people just say, thank you, Ravi, for making this video. You solved a problem for us. That's great. Uh, you mentioned the uh, um, mother of motivation. We'll, we'll come back to that because uh, uh, sure. I know you have some thoughts about this. Uh, I have as well. Mm -hmm. um, but um, Mm, you, you said that you spent like 99% of your time doing consulting jobs, but yep. looking at the amount of the content you put online, this is yep. like crazy. So, um, yeah, well, <laughs> what, what's your daily schedule to put all the, these things in place and to have yeah. the time for everything? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's a great question. And, uh, and I, I love talking about it <laughs> because uh, <laughs> okay. it, it, it is all about time management. It is all about uh, it, more than time management. I think it is also about uh, your motivation in life in general, because if you're motivated to do, to do something, your work may not seem like work or whatever you're doing. Uh, it may not seem like an effort. So whatever I do, uh, personally, I don't really feel that I'm working. It, it feels like, you know, I'm getting paid just to talk to someone or just to you know do something which i love like for example if i am writing a script i love doing it and i and i get paid now talking about my schedule um it is definitely a bit uh tight or uh, as compared to what uh, you know majority of people do it is definitely a bit aggressive so i wake up at four o'clock in the morning and uh, from four o'clock till seven o'clock i spend time uh, writing code so because that is my zone like no one is disturbing mm -hmm. me and then from 7 a.m till 9 a.m in the morning 
I do my morning course, like, uh, you know, I, I drop my daughter to school or, uh, you know, I, I just go for a walk. I eat food, breakfast, and then uh, from nine till uh, five o'clock, I do my my consulting, my mm-hmm. basically main work, my job. And it is usually, you know, it usually involves, you know, talking to someone, training someone on Jira or uh, helping them. And usually the way I work, I, I have like long ter- long term assignments or engagements where uh, uh, the teams that I've worked with, I'm basically part of their team. So I'm basically mm-hmm. their Jira guru. And uh, I'm sure you know that, you know, you can do a lot of wonderful things with Jira. It's not just about yeah. writing scripts or doing some uh, configurations. It is more about, uh, uh, if I have to simplify this, I basically help others or enable them to use the tool. And it, it can involve uh, helping someone to move away from Excel sheet mm-hmm. or basically helping them how to create a small uh, pie chart. So I do a lot of things with Jira. And in the evening, when I'm done with my work, it, and it is like part of my ritual or part of my schedule, I spend literally 15 minutes on making a video. So the way I, so the way I work, I basically just set up a uh, the, the the way I, the way i work the way I, the way i have configured my video setup it is nothing but a bunch of shell scripts so i run a script i record myself and uh, I, when i'm done with my recording i run another script to make a screenshot and then i straight away upload it to youtube so that is what i do literally in 15 minutes wow. and, and 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 because i do it every day uh, it seems like uh, i have a lot of content yes i do have a lot of content i have thousands of videos, literally thousands of videos. But for me, making content in video format or in uh, written format is not really new. I have been blogging for 20 years. I have written Mm -hmm. books on Jira. So content creation is something that I really enjoy doing. Like when I write something, uh, I I do take a lot of notes. So whenever I do something, I store it somewhere and I have a system to store these notes. So for me, when when I have to make a video, I just pick something randomly or something that is in my mind. Or if I, if I'm frustrated about something, I make a video about it. Okay. I'm struggling to do this thing in Jira and I uh-huh. found a workaround. Let us, let us talk about it. So for me, it is more about, okay, 15 minutes of time block. I have to record myself. And within that 15 minute time block, I upload it to, to YouTube with the, with a screenshot. Uh, so I have optimized my workflow, the way I work. And I, I use like a highly customized, uh, efficient system, which is my own system. I don't really use any any tool to record videos. I just use my shell scripts. That is it. And that is why I'm able to do it uh, quickly and efficiently and every day. Wow. Yeah, this is a great, uh, great story, uh, basically, but also, yeah, great inspiration. So thanks for that. Um, so there are a couple of things. Uh, mm-hmm. Motivation is one of them, but also waking up at 4 am this is another thing which reminds me of the person named Jocko Willing you know that guy Jocko Willing he wrote the book extreme ownership uh no 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 before. really okay not, maybe not, you, not you don't have to you don't have to read it because <laughs> you already implemented some of his ideas it's about taking responsibility basically okay uh, of everything that you do in your uh, life and that guy was a navy seal and wow. he tries to implement the things that he learned on the battleground to the business, um, you know, surroundings and the business reality. And part of part of this is to um, don't rely on your motivation. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. this is also the um, title of one of your videos, yeah, uh, yeah, which yeah. I recently uh, discovered. And um, you know, this is really great because um, for for those of you who uh, mm. who don't know. Uh, this this video uh, Ravi t- told um, about um, that people really shouldn't rely on motivation because it comes and go, right? Yep. Like yep. Uh, it can be in one moment and the next uh, it can be gone. So it's rather um, it's better to do things like more like robotic style. Don't thinking about it. You know, yep. think think first, then do, mm. and turn your brain. Oh, so this is, um, yeah, yep. great idea. Yeah, it, it happens all the time. And yes, uh, uh, we all seek motivation. But at the same time, uh, as we mentioned, I, I did, I, I did uh, 
talk about it in one of my videos that I don't rely on motivation. And uh, the reason for that is that you are not always in a mood or uh, in the right state of mind to do something that you have to do. So if you follow a system, for example, I follow a system where I, if I have to do something, I just do it. I may not like doing it, but if I have to do it, I do it. But to be honest, that is again, uh, another thing. If you start mm -hmm. doing things that you like, then it may not seem like uh, work. Uh, and after some time, after some time, because I do make a video every day and mm -hmm. uh, I don't really make a video just for the sake of it. I try to uh, make it interesting and I try to share something which can be used by other people because I found something interesting and I want to talk about it. But at the same time, uh, if you if you do something which you don't like for a long time, then uh, it is also not good at the same time. So try to do something which you like so that your your, your energy level might not be great, but uh, uh, you will also not feel bad about it, like why I'm doing it. I mean, you shouldn't do those things which will uh, drain you uh, mentally. And uh, uh, that is definitely true that when you are uh, trying to achieve something really, really big, then you have to do a lot of things, like 80% of the things are just monotonous and you have to do it, which which is something not really the case for me because for me, uh, I mean, it is true that there are so many things that I have to do, which I don't like. For example, for example, I do my accounts. I have to uh, make sure that because I run a company, I have to do a lot of those things, which I don't really enjoy doing. But mm -hmm. I've, I've realized over the years that whenever you do something which you don't like doing or whenever you do something which is a bit hard, it feels good. And at the end of the day, it feels good. So yeah. if you have to do it, you have to do it. That is it. And uh, um, motivation is one thing which uh, I, uh, of course, I, I do seek motivation, but at the same time, I don't rely on it. I just rely on my system. My system is nothing but my to-do list. Yeah. Okay. And discipline, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, okay. So um, you have like... Uh, on, uh, over 15 years experience with Jira, right? Uh, so it's uh, because from what I know, you started using that tool in 2007. So it's like 16 years now. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> yeah. that, that that was the time when I first uh, asked to do something with Jira. <laughs> yeah, th these are just dates, but still uh, it's a lot of time. And uh, yeah. you've gained a lot of experience during that time. I'm sure you're showing this on your videos mm -hmm. and so on. Um, and um, the not relying on the motivation is one of the parts of being a, a professional um, mm -hmm. in my in my vision of being pro. So mm -hmm. um, what is your vision of being a professional? And when the second part of the question, when um, because I assume that you are um, see yourself as a full pro um, guy and you know businessman as well. So, what was the moment when you realized, looking back at your path, okay, I am now full pro. Uh, yeah, let's let's keep going. Uh, well, I it's a good question, and uh, if you're asking about uh, because I run my own company. And I used to also work with uh, other companies. So I have worked mm -hmm. as an employee. And uh, if I look at my career, I think uh, it has been more than 20 years. I first started uh, earning money when I was in uh, college. And it feels good that you are able to use your skills to earn money. Because at the end of the day, we live in this uh, world where we need uh, money. So in the early stages of I think not just me, but for everyone's career or their when, when they start their career, I think money is definitely one criteria and you're driven by that because you need to earn money or maybe you're expected to earn money. But more than the money factor for me, I think it was also about uh, doing something uh, that is not only that is not only uh, rewarding as compared to working for someone else. But at the same mm -hmm. time, uh, I feel that whatever you do, or whatever you are doing, I think you should leave some impact. And uh, when you work for someone, I don't really feel like, uh, I mean, it is not really, it may not be true for each and every company, but for, I think for majority of uh, companies where you work as an employee, you're just doing something and you don't even know 
what is your uh, impact for yeah. example if i if, if i'm writing uh, some piece of code of course that piece of code will go somewhere right uh, someone will probably use it somewhere and uh, you're contributing the contribution is there but the impact is very less and at the same time when you're working in a company when you when you're employed by someone it is uh, not always i mean wonderful experience because you are always reporting to someone there is someone who is managing you and more than uh, this uh, employee employer relationship you are always involved in this office politics so i never really felt like uh, i think it's more about my personality i always mm-hmm. uh, loved doing things on my own for example if i'm uh, let us say if i'm creating a simple project and if i'm able to solve a problem it feels good it feels wonderful for example uh, if I, if i look at my career i've i've done a lot of wonderful things uh, and i'm i'm quite happy and satisfied with it and i've done different things for example i used to work on open source i used to do linux consultation i used to also uh do consultation around uh, excel i'm not really sure if you know about excel vba so i used to do basically these small projects mm-hmm. uh, as a freelancer and then sometime in 2010 i realized i thought okay i think it is too much now i can't really do these things uh, as a freelancer or as a part time uh, project i need to basically do it seriously so i then formed a company and then uh, of course you know when you when you form a company you have to take it a bit more seriously and uh, you have to also you know worry about uh, paying your uh, salaries and uh, your bills and everything uh, for me my vision is actually very simple i just want to be happy i just want to uh, do some good work and leave an impact in this world and at the same time um, i want to share you know whatever i'm doing or whatever i can share with everyone and that is why you know these videos is like my own way my own medium my own channel where uh, i can do whatever i want uh, no one is going to stop me because if you are working for a company you may yeah. not be able to share each and everything but if you have your own channel you're free to do whatever you want so i, I do experiment with this concept of sharing something it it may not be just a video it can be a blog post and i do have a podcast where i you know some of my some of my videos where i think i can convert it to a podcast i do also share it on a podcast and i think uh, in 2023 we have so many different mediums and ways to share content but yeah. professionally of course because i am working for uh, uh, my client my my uh, customers uh, i try uh, to deliver quality work and uh, if if someone is hiring me or if someone is hiring our company we have to be honest and we have to be authentic but my vision personally is you know just to be happy i don't really have any plans to uh hire 100 people or grow to 500 people company that is not me i'm happy running my own small company and do quality work that is my vision wow uh, beautiful vision <laughs> beautiful goal and as you said previously when you have your big goal somewhere you have to um cut it to smaller pieces so we can achieve this goal right yeah. um and the same thought um uh, it's about like having your ipa- impact in the world and do mm-hmm. what you like so we have to put meaning in every little thing that you do like uh, creating project let's say right this is yeah. like as, as you said simple thing but still if you know the impact so um there are also people involved when when you know that people are going to use this little part so yep. that's where your impact is yep so th- there is another thought that i really liked uh, which i mm, discovered in your videos and this is uh, like great advice for uh, people who like feel um not only in jira administration but at some other jobs um who feel that they don't have an impact uh or maybe they're a little bit bored or something mm-hmm. they don't have they don't see the meaning so um your your message was and i completely agree look beyond your role and you know connect with the people um so you gonna know their needs mm-hmm. you gonna know um how they feel about it and then your work will be more meaningful to you and to them yep yep that is that is correct and uh, i i feel that i mean personally when i solve a problem it can be a small problem for anyone it feels really good because they uh, for, for you or for for me someone who 
let us say, has been uh, doing their work, let us say, because we are talking about Jira, we know how mm-hmm. Jira works, we know how to do things yeah. in Jira, but for majority of people, they are uh, trying to just do something very simple. And uh, if you're able to help them, and uh, if they are uh, able to use your help, and at the same time, they have also gained something, then they will remember you for a long time. And it happens, uh, you know, with me a lot. And especially the kind of work I do. Of course, I work with my clients and I do, you know, spend time with different people. Uh, Majority of my work, because I try to focus on, uh, uh, of course, quality is one aspect. But at the same time, uh, if you are uh, being genuine and if you are being honest with whatever you're doing, people will come back to you. So majority of majority of the work that I get, I don't really do any advertising. It is all uh, either uh, through my content online or it is basically someone who referred me. Uh, and it is. I, I think I feel that it is maybe because of that small little impact because you can't really measure the impact uh, all the time. It can yeah. be a small help for someone who was just trying to create a report and uh, send it to someone, but uh, they were not really able to do it because they had no idea that there is something called as a dashboard in Jira. So if you are true to your job or basically if you are uh, being honest and if you are basically the way you work, the way I try to work, I try to be helpful and I try not to judge uh, the other person, especially in consulting where mm-hmm. you may be working with a CEO or you may be working with uh, someone who has just joined the organization. And the level of uh, work that, that I have to do, it can be simple, it can be difficult, but you have to be, you know, just humble and uh, be nice to everyone. And people will remember the small impact. Yeah, I totally agree. This is great. Um, yeah, but you are, um, yeah, in part, you rely on the tool, which is Jira, but uh, now, not, not now, but uh, like there is a movement of migrate, migrating companies uh, mm. from Jira server to data center or cloud and yep. cloud is getting more and more popular but still it is very um different and it is limited hmm. um when we compare this to on-premise versions right so how um uh, how you feel about this actually because uh i know that you um uh, jira data center and server is your favorite when it comes to jira so um what about Jira Cloud? You have to know it, right? Yep, so yep. what are your thoughts about that? Uh, well, um, so a couple of things. Um, personally, I don't like Cloud, Jira Cloud, because uh, personally, because if I have the kind of things, the, the wonderful things that I can do on Jira Data Center, uh, it's beyond uh, you know limit. You can do whatever you want on Jira Data Center because you have that yes. capability. You can... Uh, you can, of course, you know, use uh, script runner. You can also uh, basically write a small plugin. So there are wonderful things that you can do. It is fast. It is uh, quick. And at the same time, um, you have it has control. Of, it has a lot of features. It has a lot of, lot, of wonderful feature, uh, lot of wonderful features and flexibility. Jira Cloud, uh, of course, if I remove my personal preference, I know that Jira Cloud's, Cloud is inevitable. Jira Cloud is uh, going to be the, it is already the feature, it is already being used. People are moving to it. And uh, I know it really well because I, I use it every day. I help other uh, other people use it and get the most out of it. And uh, on Jira Cloud, your strategy has to be different because me as a consultant, my career is based on Atlassian tools. And, uh, and when, when, at Lushen announced that they're going to stop Jira server. Uh, I knew that a lot of companies would just uh, move to another tool or uh, they will, of course, you know, look for other options. But at the same time, when it comes to consulting, it is definitely different on Jira Cloud. There are features which are, of course, as you mentioned, they are limiting, but I'm trying to get the most out of it. For example, if you go to my channel, I have hundreds of videos on uh, automation rules. I have hundreds of videos mm-hmm. on Jira REST API. And uh, now we are also building our apps on Forge. So we are also trying to evaluate uh, what we can do with Forge. And uh, it, it is, of course, not like data center, but there mm-hmm. is still uh, some scope. Of course, you can't really customize uh, 
if if you if you look at the customization customizability aspect of jira cloud uh, it is of course nowhere close to jira data center and that is what uh, i i'm doing we are doing as a company we are trying to change the approach and the mindset we are trying to use whatever we have on jira cloud and it is not bad uh, for example jira automation is not bad uh, if you compare it with let us say script now and i know forge mm-hmm. is evolving so there will be more features and uh, there will be more uh, capabilities so that we can uh, instead of using uh, uh, some app we can probably build our own app using forge because we mm-hmm. do get these requirements from our clients where they need to do something and they want some kind of a private app so this is something that we are now in a process to you know learn as well uh, but yeah i i am balanced uh, i am of course at the same time uh, not massively happy about uh, the announcement yeah and at the same time i know that it is still uncertain what will happen to jira data center yes or the russian might uh, uh, wake up one day and announce that okay that is it we are going to shut it down and uh, that will of course impact me <laughs> but so far i'm still with jira i'm still with atlassian i, I, I of course uh, you know you you think about uh, changing your line or technology or maybe think about something else like monday.com or service now but for the timing i think uh, uh, i'm able to do things with jira even on yeah. cloud <laughs> you are adjusting to the market right yep um yeah that was one of my questions which i thought about um that you wake up uh, next morning and the jira um, data center is like you know mm. shut down <laughs> but you are somehow prepared for that right i mean uh, mentally a little bit because uh, closing the jira server was uh, you know like big big yep. really decision which has a big impact on the market yep, yep. um exactly and there was uh, there were and there still are voices that the same will happen to data center mm. um, you know the voices coming from the community um, and they base on the thing that atlassian invests so much in uh, jira um, cloud and yep. they living a little bit um, data center behind mm. Mm. so what exactly. do you think about yeah what do you think about um, Atlassian policy, actually, also when it comes to licenses, pri- pri- like raising the prices, because I know I'm asking you also as an open source enthusiast, like you yep. are using Linux, I'm using Linux, I'm also a Linux administrator, I love this. Hmm. Uh, so I, I I know what open source should look like. And yep. um, what was your opinion on, on, on Atlassian politics then? Uh, So when you say Atlassian policies, are you talking about uh, the? Uh, are you thinking about making Jira data center a hell the open source or? Uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's that can be our dream, right? But uh, I mean about current state of this policy, like the uh, raising the prices uh, and forcing actually people to move to the cloud somehow. Hmm. And, um, yeah, yeah, it is definitely. Um, because that whatever atlassian is doing i think they are doing it as a company because they have to be profitable and uh, they have to of course make sure that uh, they are they are they are earning money uh, they, they don't really want to be uh, a loss making company so it makes sense from their point of view but of course it is uh, definitely unfair for a lot of uh, small companies who were using jira server i i had jira server I always had Jira server uh, license with me, my own personal license, and uh, and I can't do that anymore because that is not really an option. So now, if I have to do something on Jira data center, because I do have to uh, write scripts, and for writing scripts, you need to run a run or set up your own Jira instance. You need the yeah. evaluation key. But for many small companies or even medium sized companies, they can't really afford to go to Jira data center. They'll probably move away from Jira. and uh, they will probably uh, use maybe azure or uh, github or gitlab because eventually they just need to do issue tracking but there are a lot of other options as well before i moved to jira before i started uh, using jira or started liking jira or started started basically uh, 
building my career around Jira. I tried and used few open source uh, project management or issue trackers. I mean, we all know about Bugzilla, Track, Redmine, and mm, uh, Open yeah. Project. So there are different uh, options there already. Unfortunately, when it comes to issue tracking or when it comes to project management uh, solution, we don't really have a lot of uh, alternatives, real alternatives to Jira. I mean, the features that you get. But if I if I look at the whole situation right now, I think it is a bit unfair because uh, uh, if if a small company, 50 people company, or even 100 people company, they are happy running their own Jira uh, instance yeah. on, on a server, they have no option. They have to move away. They can't really afford. It, it doesn't really make sense for them to purchase Jira data center. It is going to be too expensive for them. Yeah, and it is a pity because uh, they are taking control of you, right? Like, I mean, uh, when you have like on-premise uh, Jira, you have like access to database. <laughs> you can do yep. some things on the server and even write a shell script or something. I yep. can do yep. work yep. for yep. you. Yeah, that is that is definitely. Uh, I, I mean, uh, b- because anyone who is doing something with Jira uh, for more than ten years, I'm yeah. sure they have done those. Uh, bad things like in injecting javascript or modifying velocity files or uh, updating the database directly or if not updating at least you're reading the da- database because you can't really do each and everything uh, using uh, rest yeah, api you or java you need to access the database in fact someone was asking me how to fetch the uh, last date when the password was changed so you can't do that uh, without uh, looking in the, into the database yeah. and you need these things when you are working in a very high i'm not not always secure but in an in an organization where uh, there is a need of compliance and uh, you need to uh, basically follow these regulations and uh, if you don't really have access to the database if you if you don't really have access to your own data then uh, uh, for yeah. them those companies cloud is not really an option yeah yeah uh, i feel the same mm, yeah and now also AI comes to the picture because, um, as we know, Jira service management will will be mm-hmm. and even is in some parts uh, AI powered. And what do you think about this? And also, do you use um, AI in your daily uh, tasks? No. no, I have absolutely no uh, no usage of AI yet. And to be honest. Yes. Uh, Yet, I, and I'm I'm not even actively looking for doing something with AI. And to be honest, AI is not really like a new thing. Uh, I think uh, I'm sure you know there was some news 20 years ago, and uh, from time to time we do hear about it. And I think it is yeah. already being used, uh, but it's more about the hype because I think in the last six months, because of uh, this uh, chat GPT, yeah, yeah, I think I, I think uh, people are talking a lot about it. But I, I don't really think. Uh, uh, there is any significant? I mean, this is my opinion, or this is what I feel, what I think. I don't really think uh, uh, we are not really doing anything significantly new, because we all know about these. Uh, let, let us talk about AI. So uh, th- there are some chat-based solutions where you can ask questions and you will get a reply. Of course, if they are not perfect, but at least uh, you know you always had. I mean, there was always this option to get some responses. Uh, the chat GPT thing, I tried it, then I got bored, and uh, and uh, I don't really use any AI-based thing uh, yet. I, I know it, it will definitely improve in future because, mm-hmm. because AI is based on data, AI is based on learning, and now we have this <clears throat> data available because yeah. uh, d- data collection, data processing is happening uh, now uh, more than ever. Uh, so d- yes. definitely it will, it will come, it will evolve. But for me, the kind of work I do I, I'm yet to use it personally, huh. yet. Let us see how it goes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, maybe let's come back to your um, daily routine because there is another mm-hmm. thing that I wanted to ask you about. Um, mm-hmm. Because you do a lot of things, right? And you don't um, rely on the motivation. We already said that. But still, where do you have uh, the energy from? No? Uh, because... Um, getting up at 4 a.m uh, it's not that people usually do actually uh yeah it is so it, it is actually uh so 
just to share with you, mm-hmm. uh, I don't really think I'm that energetic. I, in fact, I'm a bit lazy. And I think uh, it is like a very normal human trait. Uh, we are lazy. Uh, we want to be lazy because no no one wants to do hard things. For me, waking up at 4 o'clock is not really a difficult thing because I do it anyways. And I, okay. I, I, wake, up, I, I wake up at 4 o'clock because I sleep at 9 o'clock. And... Uh, and uh, I have been doing it for many years. So it is just a time of, of the day when I wake up. That is it. Okay. So if you wake up at 9 o'clock or if you wake up at 7 o'clock, if you wake up at 4 o'clock, I don't really think uh, there is any difference. It depends on uh, whether you're able to sleep properly. So if you sleep early, you will wake up early. That is it. I don't really think it is anything extraordinary. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry uh, to disappoint you, but uh, it is not really a great thing to do. Anyone can do it. It's like a more hyped thing. You know, when you wake up early, four o'clock, uh, then people want to talk about it. It is good because when you wake up early, you feel like you are getting two extra hours, but it is more about, it's not really just two or three extra hours. It is more about the focus time because for me, the way I work uh, or basically based on my situation, the morning time is the best time for me. But I know a lot of people, they, they work late. Uh, of course, you know, working late, we all know, uh, I mean, for majority of people, or if we talk to some medical pro- professional, uh, like doctors, I'm sure they will not really recommend working late. But I think for a lot of people working late nights. Yeah, yeah it, I think depends. It, works. it depends on the people. Yeah. yeah, I'm asking because I like to work late, but I also mm. like to get up early. Now, mm. now I have a little, little kids, so it's a little bit mm. harder because... I r- rarely have like yeah. um, good sleep at night. Um, yeah, but uh, I will have to yeah. wait a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah th- this habit of me waking up early, I think it is my childhood habit uh, because I used to, because my parents used to wake me up uh, mm-hmm. early in the morning and they used to uh, force me to study. And uh, then, of course, of course, and I didn't like it because, you know, we want to, when it is a bit cold, you want to stay in your bed. And you want to stay warm, but uh, when you wake up early, you uh, you know do your work or whatever you're doing. Maybe you're studying. You you may not always like it, but when you start doing it over the period of time, you will enjoy it, and it feels good because uh, when you work for three hours uninterrupted, you can actually achieve uh, a lot. For me, majority of uh, uh, the the most difficult thing that I have to do. Like if I'm working on some mm-hmm. um, app or if I'm writing a script or if I'm doing anything difficult, uh, by seven o'clock, it feels like I have done uh, majority of my work for the day. And rest rest of the day is just, you know, talking to people where, of course, you can't really avoid uh, distractions because uh, because when you're spending those three hours in the morning, no one, will, no one would ever call you or set up a yeah. meeting early in the morning. So that is like my zone or my uh, distraction free time, but it is not difficult. You just need to start doing it. And uh, maybe if you do it for like one week, two week, one month, you'll get used to it. Yeah, it's this simple. is a great advice. Great advice. So uh, listen, all you people, it's not that hard, but yeah, but when we, when I hear like three hours uh, undistracted these days, it's uh, hmm. you no, know, where, when we have a lot of distractions from everywhere, all yeah. of the temptation, you know. So um, yep. yeah, it seems great. I I also agree. I also like to yeah to get and, up and early. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and uh, because you were asking me energy about the energy. Yes. So after I make my videos, like uh, by five fifteen or five fifty, I'm actually done for the day. So I, I don't really do anything um, after five thirty or six o'clock. For example, right now I'm talking to you. It's like enjoying. Uh, I'm basically enjoying. Unfortunately, I don't really have my beer with me. But usually, oh. this is my this is my uh, time, time w- when I do whatever I want to do. I do like light work. Like maybe if I'm uh, writing something, or if I'm watching some video or uh, Netflix or Amazon. Although I uh, recently cancelled my subscriptions, but after five thirty, I'm done for the day, and I don't really think about the work. So I, I do try to follow this routine, and. Uh, if I if someone is asking me to, me to do some work after five o'clock or six o'clock, I, I don't I don't like it. Uh, but sometimes I have to do it. But for ninety percent of the times, after five o'clock or five thirty, 
I'm I'm uh, free. I, I'm done for my day. But of course, you know, I need to improve myself. As I mentioned before, I need to, of course, take some breaks. I don't really think I take a lot of breaks. Mm-hmm. Maybe because I love I love doing my work or whatever I do, I, I enjoy it. So I don't feel like working, but I need to like force myself sometimes to, you know, okay, let's not work for two days, which is rare for me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so what do you do like besides work? What is your uh, like thing that you are, you, you finish your day at five uh, or you are have a free weekend, couple of days mm-hmm. free. So what, what do you do? What is your passion, hobby? Uh, I do a lot of things or I used to do a lot of things. I mean, uh, I don't really, really always do these things, but uh, my, my problem is, which is, I think, a good problem. I, I like doing a lot of things. So I, I like doing, uh, uh, I, I love going for a walk. I mean, you can ask me to walk for uh, like 20 kilometers or 20 miles. I would love to do that. I like mm-hmm. cycling. I like spending time with my family. I also uh, love to have a drink with my friend. I, I love going to bars. So I, I just do normal things that other normal people do. Nothing extraordinary, but uh, I I don't really take a lot of holidays, which is something which I really want to improve, uh, which is, I think, not a good thing. I think you should definitely take breaks and uh, uh, take like proper holidays. But uh, apart from that, uh, I do uh, sometimes... Uh, go to events not mm-hmm. always like uh, it is something that i started doing now because after covid now things are open and uh, when you go to these events for example uh, tomorrow i'm going to one of the atlassian community event uh, mm-hmm. which is uh, nice because i will meet my old colleagues my friends but at the same time i get to have a drink with them and uh, you know meet new people and yeah. also learn learn from you know people who are uh, p- presenting and i do of course try to talk and present but this this is something that i'm doing now a bit more uh, uh, regularly like going to the events because you you don't really f- uh, you don't really have to prepare anything you just need to okay after work okay let me let me go to this event and uh, you know I'll, i'll probably learn something and i'll uh, gain something out of it But yeah, I just do normal things, nothing extraordinary. I don't really run marathons. I don't really uh, play games or video games. Uh, I love watching movies. I love watching uh, YouTube videos, uh, like especially vlogs, because these days you can just watch a vlog of yeah. someone uh, traveling to a remote location where you would never really go, but you still uh, love watching those videos. So this is what I do in my free time. And of course, my household course. Okay. Okay, um, so what are your next uh, next steps for the future? I know one of these steps would be improving your holiday time <laughs> yeah, and yeah, making yeah. it a little bit longer. Okay, that's one step. And another steps, what, what do you plan for, you know, a couple of months ahead? Yeah, I yeah. so I, I do have like some immediate plans. Like on a personal level, I think uh, we do have, we all have personal and uh, professional goals. Yeah. On a personal level, yes, I want to definitely uh, take more holidays and travel. So this year, I def- definitely want to travel uh, a lot. Uh, so I will. I'm hoping to travel to Europe. It has been a while. I've never been to Poland, so maybe I'll go. I'll, I'll come to Poland. Yeah, you are uh, always but, invited. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I will. I will let you know, and maybe we can. Hopefully, we'll one day we'll uh, make this podcast yeah. uh, live, face to face to face. That would be awesome. Would be would be great. Yeah, and uh, apart from uh, <clears throat> apart from uh, traveling, I am trying to also focus a bit more on my fitness. Although I think I'm in a in a in a good shape, but you know there is no limit of uh, of what you can do. So definitely, my my fitness is uh, one of my goal uh, for this year. On a professional side, I want to of course you know keep doing what I'm doing. I'm happy with it. I think I'm doing great. But at the same time. Uh, If you don't really challenge yourself, then uh, you're not really improving. So you need to always, you know, keep keep on pushing yourself. So things like, of course, uh, building apps. Uh, that is, of course, something uh, that I want to do this year. And uh, I want to build some apps that I can sell. So we are mm-hmm. actually working uh, on on app development. Uh, at the same time, we are, we have, of course want to grow our uh, company. Not really massively, but organically. So we are trying to, you know. Uh, 
grow not really in each and every aspect because as a as a consultancy company as as a company who is doing it large work you can do a lot of things but our niche is uh, automation scripting mm-hmm. and uh, integration and at the same time uh, education education is really our uh, like one area where i where we really want to grow and of course youtube so this year i am hoping to improve my videos because i know my videos are a bit raw my videos are unedited but at the same time i'm trying to do small improvements here and there so that i can make my videos a bit more effective uh and uh, and i think because people follow my videos i think i also have this responsibility because if someone is looking forward to me they they have some expectations from me and i think i can do better when it comes to making videos so this year i'm planning i'm hoping to improve my youtube channel and make uh, more useful content for everyone and i'm also writing books uh, so hopefully this year uh, i will i will publish a uh, couple of books let us see how it goes so, yeah. wow i already have like a lot of content it's not very really dedicated yeah. it's more about just pushing myself and finding some dedicated yeah. time some regular time for a few weeks uh, so I, i have some books that are lined up and the way can i work, tell us, I, can you tell us the topic of these books or not yet it, it is it a secret or not it, it's it's not a secret but uh, and i've shared this on my channel okay. i am uh, I, i am writing books on um, jira work management i am writing books on uh, uh, on script enough for jira so uh, so because people like people uh, follow me for these topics and of yeah. course you know uh, when it comes to uh, automation integration something on those those lines so i, I do have some books that are already like 70% 80% complete but i i think the remaining 20% 30% is uh, the most difficult so most likely yeah. my first book would be on uh, either jira work management or maybe uh, jira for project managers so i'm 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 still not conf- i'm still not sure st- still not sure about uh, having a separate book or maybe just one book uh, and and that is what i'm thinking about because i want to make this book or write this book which uh, I, i don't really mind the thickness of the book but it should be useful and yeah. uh, and when you are a right. content creator you want if you want to write a book you want people to buy it not because you want to earn money but because uh, if, if people buy it then uh, it means that whatever you did whatever you wanted to do your goal your your objective uh, it should basically serve the purpose so definitely planning to you know publish some books uh, this year let us see how it, how it goes yeah great so all that's left i can wish you you know good luck with all of your plans and it was great talking to you thank you ravi so Uh, we, I really hope that we will meet uh, in person someday. Uh, you are living now in London. Yes. Or... Yes. Yes. Okay. So so... It's not so far away. I'm I'm in England from time to time, but you are really? always invited. There. Yeah, okay. I have a family there on the mm, by the seaside. Uh, it's okay. uh, Eastbourne. It's okay. Uh, it's not far away from Hastings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that is not far. I'm I'm sure when you when you come to London, if you if you are uh, coming here by flight, then I'm sure you're landing at Heathrow. Uh, um, so yeah, it's not. I mean, we, whenever you are in London area, message me. We can meet for uh, beer, coffee, tea, whatever you prefer. Or maybe we can make a podcast together. Yeah, or maybe, maybe or maybe or maybe we'll just uh, go for a walk. <laughs> yeah, twenty miles. <laughs> Yeah, twenty miles. Great. I yeah. also love walking, so yeah, that's that is a good idea. Good. Or good. doing a podcast, yeah, while walking and drinking beer. This is all yeah. in one. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. We can do that. Okay. Okay. So thanks for uh, for accepting the invitation, and see you, you know, in the future. And once again, good luck. Thank you, Luca, for inviting me. It was lovely talking to you. Thank you.